Good morning, my friends. It's me again, your favorite dental wear. Just getting up. Had to have a cup of coffee. Made my bed. Thought I'd jump on here real quick because I didn't put up a video scheduled to put out today. Uh, my brother and I spent all day yesterday cleaning the house. I mean, we cleaned the house. We cleaned everything. Um, I vacuumed and dusted, wiped off the TV, uh, vacuumed all the cat hair off the couch, uh, vacuumed the whole house, vacuumed the steps, swept and mopped. Uh, my brother did the, uh, wiped off the handrails on the steps, some uh, spots that were on the walls. Uh, handles on the refrigerator you know we work in the shop a lot so when we get dirty hands you know sometimes we come up and get something out of the refrigerator walking up the stairs our hands are on the rails you know and the rails get dirty and, and things like that my brother got off early yesterday he only got one load on his truck uh, and they cut him off because it was snowing so bad I'll, uh, I'll show you the snow in tomorrow's video uh, it snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed. So winter is finally among us. It's uh, pretty doggone cold. But I don't have to worry about my teeth hurting when I go outside. <laughs> don't have to worry about a toothache ever again. Don't have to worry about the cold wind hitting my teeth and making me shudder feeling that instant pain. Uh, my brother and I were talking about after 22 or 23 years with his dentures how he can still remember the pain that he had in his mouth when it was cold. And I told him, I said, well it's only been four years for me so yeah, the memories are still very clear to me. Uh, the pain I felt. And, you know, we had to eat soft food all the time because we'd break a tooth if we tried to eat something like a steak. Uh, you know, we'd break a tooth off and then we'd have an abscess forever. Uh, we had just raw nerves just hanging loose. It, you know, every time we ate something cold, it would hit, our, hit those nerves and just shoot pain through our mouths and up through our heads. And... and you know, those are memories that I'll never forget. And my brother, you know, 22, 23 years with his dentures, he still remembers that pain. He still remembers it to this day. That's something you're never going to forget. But once you get your dentures, once you get used to your dentures, once you're able to function with your dentures, once everything is right with your dentures, you're going to remember that in a good way because you're going to remember it like I do. You're going to be like, hey, I can go outside and go <sighs> with or without my teeth in and I don't have any pain in my mouth from the cold. Or I can eat ice cream and I don't have pain in my mouth from the cold. Or I can eat sweet things like sugar donuts and I don't have any pain in my mouth, you know. Uh, I don't have to worry about getting a toothache or a tooth infection or an abscess from eating a sweet donut. There's so much freedom that comes with having dentures that I didn't have when I had my rotten, nasty, ugly, gross, disgusting, broken off, black nubs of what used to be teeth. I've showed you pictures of my mouth before. I looked like a meth addict. And It was embarrassing, but at the same time, I still ran my business. I still got plenty of business because even though people would judge me from looking at my mouth, my personality would, and my professionalism, would win them over. They would realize that even though in their mind they were judging me when they first saw me, when I spoke to them, when I wrote up their estimates, when I talked to them about how we were going to do the job, how many people I had on my crew, 
how long it was going to take us, what type of, type of equipment I was going to use, uh, explain it to them how I would uh, approach the job so that I wouldn't drop limbs on their house or tear off their gutter, things like that. When I spoke to them, that overruled their judgment of my mouth. So I had to be very uh, I can't think of the word now. <laughs> I had to be the word isn't professional. It's it's a different word I'm looking for. Maybe you can help me out. Uh, if you know what I'm trying to say, leave leave that word in the comments. I had to be I just can't think of the damn word. I had it on the tip of my tongue a minute ago, but since I don't have my teeth in it, it just kind of fell out. <laughs> just kind of fell off the tip of my tongue. There was nothing there to hold it in. <laughs> anyway, that, uh, you know, doing uh, trimming trees for a living, I had to make sure that I kept my crew busy all the time. Uh, I had six people on my crew. Each person on my crew got paid $100 a day, whether we worked four hours or eight hours or 12 hours. We had a bunch of six-hour days because when I first started off, I was paying my crew per hour, right? And it did not take long for me to realize that my crew was riding the clock. Instead of just getting the job done, they were moping around, you know, drag one limb and put it on a truck and go back and drag another limb and put it on a truck, you know, trying to get that full eight, ten hours in. So when I finally sat down with my crew and I said, hey, here's the deal. I don't like being out in this hot sun up in a tree for 12 hours. I want to get this done. So I would rather spend six hours out in the hot sun climbing a tree and slinging chainsaws and get done with the tree and come down and help you guys load. I'd rather do it in six hours instead of 12. So I'm going to pay you each $100 cash at the end of every day no matter how fast we get the job done. But we have to do it safely. And after I told them that, then all of a sudden jobs started getting done faster. Yeah, the first month or so it would still take, you know, seven, eight hours. But then as they realized we had a couple of four hour days, smaller jobs that only took us four hours to do, and they still got their hundred dollars they realized oh wait a minute i'm still going to get paid a hundred dollars even if we get the job done way fast i'm like yeah that's what i agreed to so from that point on they really hustled and worked i believe people should be paid with their worth but at the same time they should be worth what they're being paid and Sometimes paying somebody what they're worth will, or paying somebody what you assume they're worth, or what you want them to be worth, will get them to boost their productivity to equal or exceed what you're paying them. And I've always believed in that, and because every actual job job I had paid shit money you know so that brings to mind a, a, a story that I saw and uh, I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent here but that brings to mind a little story I saw this this guy goes to a uh, a fabrication shop if you don't know what that is it's where they you know they, they just make stuff out of metal and uh, they can make anything out of metal. And he goes into this fabrication shop and he, and he says, uh, I'm, I'm here to apply for the welder's position. 
and the guy says, okay, well, we pay from $12 to $25 an hour depending on your ability. So he takes two pieces of metal and he sets them like this in a T, like this in a T shape, and he tells them, I want you to weld both sides of this T shape for me and I'll determine how much I'm going to pay you. So his first weld he gets on there, he gets a stick and set up and he welds and he makes this beautiful weld all the way down one side. Just beautiful, the most beautiful weld you'd ever want to see. Then he turns it around and the next weld he's just stabbing the stick in there, splotching it and splattering it and he's just welded everywhere, you know. And it looked like a two-year-old did it. And he cools it off in the water and everything, and he takes it back over to the boss, and he shows him the shitty weld first. And he goes, sir, this is my $12 an hour weld. And then he flips it around to the most beautiful weld you ever saw in your life, and he goes, this is my $25 an hour weld. So you decide how much you want to pay me. <laughs> And a lot of people know what their worth is, but a lot of people think they're worth more than they are. I had a guy on my crew one time and came to work for me, big old bodybuilder type guy, you know, arms this big around and, you know, went to the gym four times a week, and all of this stuff, you know. And he comes out to work for me and I told him, I said, uh, you know, I, I start everybody off at $65 a day for the first couple of weeks until I see what you're worth and if you're worth as much as the rest of the crew then I'll bump you up to a hundred dollars a day and you'll be equal to everybody else. Well, he starts bragging about how much he can bench press and how much he can squat and all of this stuff and I'm not a very big guy. I'm, I'm actually kind of small guy. We get done with a tree. We had a removal and we took the whole tree down and there's some pretty good sized logs at the base of that tree, about, you know, that big around. Big enough that I could still put it on my shoulder, but about the size of a 55 gallon barrel. And we cut them three feet long. Um, we had a guy that wanted firewood and he wanted the logs to be three feet long. So anytime we got big logs like that, we cut them three feet long. We'd take all the brush and all of that to the compost facility. And then we'd come back and get the logs. We'd take them out to the to the guy that wanted firewood. He had a, a boiler system and he needed three feet. Nobody else in town could deliver those size logs. So, uh, long story short, we come back to get the logs and most of my crew would team up two on two, you know, one on, one on each end of the log, and pick them up, throw them on the truck. Well, he teamed up with a guy and he couldn't even pick up one end. And I walked over there and I was like, what's going on? And he was like, uh, well, you know, I told you I could bench press this much and squat this much, but I can't seem to get this log up. So I looked at my friend Jimmy, who was working with me, and I said, uh, what do you think, Jimmy? And he goes, do it, boss. So I reached, reached down, grabbed the whole log, threw it up on my shoulder, which I did on a daily basis, carried it to the truck, threw it in the truck, and I walked back over to him and I said, you know, all this bragging you're doing about, I said, you're twice my size, and all this bragging you're doing about how much you bench press and, and squat and everything else, I said, there's a difference between go muscle and show muscle, and you're just show muscle. You don't have any go. So, I said, look, I said, if you're going to work with me, you're going to need to, you know, start pulling your own weight. You're going to need to start actually straining yourself a little bit to be able to pick up some stuff. You're never going to be able to pick this stuff up unless you actually strain your muscles a little bit and put some effort into it. Well then he realized uh, by the end of the day that it wasn't his forte. You know this kind of work really isn't my forte, he says. Uh, okay, yeah. You, you better go back to the gym because uh, you don't know how to work for real. So he never did get his hundred dollars a day. He quit on me before that. But 
I have no idea why I'm just running off on a tangent today and just talking about crazy stuff, but it's fun. So, yeah, I started talking off, I started off talking about the cold on your teeth and getting your dentures, and then I went off on a tangent, but that's okay. Sometimes it's okay to do that. I'm going to end it here, my friends. Don't forget the Denture Fit sale is going on right now, 20, uh, not 20% off. Uh, everything in the store is marked down right now. Click the link in the description. Uh, you get a few bonuses with your order. Also, don't forget, you can still get on the subscription plan for uh, the U.S. You can still get on the subscription plan. It's only $16 a month. If you can't afford to do the sale, you can still get on the subscription plan. $16 a month for a regular kit, $21 a month for a snug up kit. Once you make your first payment, you get your first order. You'll get a kit every 90 days there following as long as you're making your payments. So if you, you can't afford the sale, you can still get on a subscription plan in the U.S. I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Don't forget to keep smiling, keep trying, and whatever you do, never give up.